Checkmate. That's a term you'd expect to hear in a game of chess, not on a pickleball court. Yet here we are. See, on the surface, chess and pickleball couldn't seem more different. And while pickleball players can absolutely learn from other pickleball players, let's borrow five strategies from chess you can use on the pickleball court. Number one, positional awareness. Imagine a chessboard not as a static grid, but as a dynamic landscape where every move is a calculated decision. Top chess players leave nothing to chance. They strategically position their pieces to control the center of the board and set themselves up for future success. In pickleball, there's a similar battle for control over the kitchen line, the best spot on the court for a winning advantage. See, the best players know that whether you're at the baseline playing defense or up at the kitchen on the attack, court position determines shot options. I demonstrated this in another video where two pros played two four O's, but with a twist. And they played two games. In game one, the rules were normal for both teams, and the pros won 11-0 very easily. In game two, we changed the rules, forcing the pros to play back from the baseline the whole time, while the amateurs could still come up to the kitchen. This time, the pros still won, but the score was 12-10. It clearly showed how the right positioning can greatly help, while the wrong positioning can hurt you badly. Now, as you reach higher levels, both teams understand core positioning. So how do you gain an advantage when all four players are on the same page and they all understand? Well, you have to disrupt their core positioning. And how do you do that? Two ways. Number one, get them off balance. And number two is move them off the kitchen line. See, being off balance puts a team at a disadvantage because when a player loses balance, their accuracy and shot control suffer, leading to pop-ups and misses into the net. So when you're at the kitchen, look to move the dink around, sometimes hit it wide, sometimes hit it middle, but disrupt their rhythm in order to hinder their balance. And the reason you wanna move your opponent off the kitchen line is because the farther away from the net they are, the more likely they are to have to hit up on the ball versus hitting down. And when you have to hit up, you're on the defensive, except for when you hit lobs, but not just any lobs, out of the air dink lobs over the opponent's weak shoulder, which I have a whole video on the channel about. Now, this is an underused shot that'll actually push your opponent off the kitchen line and typically bring back a weak counter response if executed properly. Number two is openings. In chess, a grandmaster's first move of the game, it's not random. It's a strategic choice designed to secure an early edge. In fact, chess players even have names for their openings like the Sicilian defense or the queen's gambit. Now this also applies to pickleball where the significance of the serve is often overlooked. It's not just about putting the ball into play, it's about dictating the point's direction. Now, unlike the return team who has the positional advantage, the serving team has the crucial first mover advantage. Unfortunately, many totally miss this and they opt for the just get it in approach. Instead, serve with the mindset of a chess grandmaster using this guiding principle, deep and different. Deep means serve the ball deep into the court because when you do this, a few things happen. Number one, you keep your opponents away from the kitchen line longer. And remember, that's where they wanna be. So deny them of the thing they want. Number two is you create a larger target for your third shot because your opponent is taking longer to move up to the kitchen, opening up more space for you to aim at their feet. Number three is they're likely gonna return the ball short, allowing you to attack from a closer distance, which is more threatening. And then the fourth one is, and this happens a lot, often they'll just miss because of the unexpected depth of your serve. And then the different part means embracing variety in your serves, whether it's deep in center or short and wide or high in middle, the variability brings unpredictability, forcing often more opponent errors. And I'll leave you with a bonus, which I learned from a local Phoenix coach, Jim Krimble. The wide serve middle opening. Serve it out wide so your opponent's kitchen entry angle changes. And in addition, this will also create a gap in the middle of the court, which you can often attack with a drive. Number three, pattern recognition skills. World chess champion Magnus Carlsen once said, one of the most important things in chess is pattern recognition. Now, pattern recognition is the ability to recognize familiar arrangements you've seen in the past and then apply it to the now. And the cool thing is, this skill is innate. If I say what goes up must, you'd say come down. Or if I say peanut butter and, your mind fills in jelly. See, over time, chess players accumulate a huge mental database of patterns, allowing them to turn the game's complexity 
into a series of predictable outcomes. This concept applies to pickleball as well. For example, if the ball goes up, you want to get your paddle down immediately to defend. That's a pattern. If a dink is hit wide enough, it leads to an ATP. That's a pattern. A down the line dink typically leads to a cross court dink. That's a pattern. If you speed up cross court, expect the next ball to go to your partner forming the triangle effect. That's a pattern. If the person in front of you gets off balance and puts their head down and loses vision of you, go and Ernie. That's a pattern. And in pickleball, these patterns are everywhere. The trick is noticing them. Because the more you recognize patterns, the more intuitive your play becomes. Best-selling author Amor Towles said it really, really well. He said, the more I know, the more I can silence the analytical side of my brain and free up the poetic side to take over. And trust me, there's a couple hundred more patterns at play here, which is one of the things you'll get in that pickleball school when it fully launches. And if you want, you can join the wait list in the description below to be notified when there's more information about that. Number four, end game expertise. As chess players know, the opening is about control, the mid game about tactics, but the end game is about strategizing for a checkmate. It's about maneuvering into a position of undeniable advantage, forcing the opponent into a corner they can't escape. And it's similar in pickleball, knowing how to finish the game, especially when you have the lead. And often the leading team feels this closeout pressure while the losing team adopts a daring all or nothing mentality. But there's a big problem many face, losing focus while leading. I faced it too. And oddly, there's another significant issue, which is experimenting with risky shots at the end of matches. The temptation is understandable, thinking, you know, why not? There's no way they come back. Unfortunately, this end game behavior tends to backfire, leading to lost points or worse, losing a game you felt was secure. So what's the solution? Resist the urge to experiment with unnecessary risk at the game's most important moments. That's what practice is for. The best understand the delicate balance between risk and reward, knowing a single mistake could change the outcome of the game. So here's the key. Let the strategies that got you the lead guide you in those final moments. Build a mental Rolodex during the game with two categories. Things that have worked, slow game at the kitchen, shake and bake, attacking the left side player's backhand. And things that haven't worked, could be playing chaotic, speeding up low balls, attacking the wrong areas of the court, then, at the end of a big match, when the pressure's on and the game's close, take a deep breath, consider your options, and let the things that have worked guide your decision making. Number five, know yourself. In chess, tactical genius often takes the spotlight, but true greatness comes from deeply understanding yourself. It reminds me of Selkirk, the sponsor of this video, who has been consistently evolving since 2014. They really grasp who they are as a company now while pushing the boundaries of who they can become. Take their Selkirk Labs program, for example, where they give the community a chance to pilot and participate in the latest advancements in pickleball paddle technology. Pretty amazing and something we can all learn from. And I'll leave a link to that program in the description below. And like Selkirk, the best players master their minds by recognizing their strengths, weaknesses, and preferred styles of play. For example, chess grandmaster Gary Kasparov was known for highly aggressive play and a risk-taking style. Whereas others like Tigran Petrosian were famous for neutralizing opponents' threats and patiently waiting for the right moment to strike. Similarly, as pickleball players, you need to deeply understand your capabilities and limitations. Are you aggressive, like Anna Lee Waters, who relentlessly attacks on all fronts with the forehand or backhand from the baseline or at the kitchen? Or are you like Ben Johns, patiently making your way to the kitchen, capitalizing on your opponent's missteps? Either way, remember, as I mentioned earlier, your position informs your shot options, but it's your ability that guides your shot selection. Now, if you implement these five strategies from chess into your pickleball game, you'll be so ahead of your opponent that even when they think they have you, you'll be the one whispering, checkmate.